7th grade, Unit 7, Lesson 7, Building Polygons, Part 2, Illustrative Mathematics. Problem number one. In the diagram, the length of segment AB is 10 units, and the radius of the circle centered at A is 4 units. Use this to create two unique triangles, each with a side length of 10 and a side length of 4. Label the sides that have the length of 10 and 4. The information tells us that the length of segment AB is 10 units and the radius is 4 units. Here's two triangles. Let's look at the top triangle and since the radius is 4 units, this side length highlighted in yellow would be 4 units. And since the length of segment AB is 10 units, this line segment would be 10 units. Connect the ends with a straight line to represent the third side length. Now let's look at the bottom triangle. Since the radius is 4 units, this side length would be 4 units. Since line segment AB is 10 units, this line would be 10 units. And connect the open ends by drawing a straight line to represent the third side length. Problem number 2. Select all the sets of three side lengths that would make a triangle. First, let me give you an idea about how you would know if three sets of side lengths would form a triangle. Take the longest side length first. Let's imagine that this longest side length is 4 inches. The sum of the other two side lengths must be greater than 4 inches. If the sum was equal to 4 inches, it couldn't form a triangle. Here's an example. 3 plus 1 is 4. When these lines finally meet, they just form a 4 inch line. In order for these two side lengths to meet and not form a straight line, in other words, forming the other two sides of a triangle, their sum has to be greater than the largest side length. Or in this case, their sum has to be greater than 4 inches. Here's an example. 3 plus 2, that's 5 inches. And when they meet, it doesn't form a straight line, it forms a triangle. Let's use that strategy for A. 8 is the largest side length, so 3 plus 4 needs to be greater than 8. Is 3 plus 4 greater than 8? No. 3 plus 4 is 7, and 7 is less than 8, so that's not going to form a triangle. Easy way to do it, looking at these three side lengths. 3 plus 4 is 7 and 7 is less than 8, so it won't form a triangle. Let's try B. Here's a look at a triangle that has a side length of 6, 7, and 12. And as you can see, it is a triangle. Remember, 6 plus 7 is 13, which is greater than 12. These three side lengths would form a triangle. C. The longest side length is 13. So the other two side lengths need to have a sum that's greater than 13. 5 plus 11 is 16, and 16 is greater than 13. So these three side lengths will form a triangle. D. 4, 6, and 12. 12 is the longest side length. So 4 plus 6 needs to be greater than 12. And since 4 plus 6 is 10, and 10 is less than 12, the side lengths for D will not form a triangle. E. 4, 6, and 10. 10 is the largest side length, so 4 plus 6 needs to be greater than 10. Since 4 plus 6 is equal to 10, the side lengths for E will not form a triangle. Problem number 3. Based on signal strength, a person knows their lost phone is exactly 47 feet from the nearest cell tower. The person is currently standing 23 feet from the same cell tower. What is the closest the phone could be to the person? What is the furthest their phone could be from them? Here's an illustration of the phone tower, the person, and their cell phone. We know that the lost phone is exactly 47 feet from the nearest cell tower and we know that the person is currently standing 23 feet from the same cell tower. The expression 47 minus 23 will tell us the closest the phone could be to the person. Since 47 minus 23 equals 24, we know that the closest the cell phone could be to that person would be 24 feet. What is the furthest their phone could be from them? 
Remember, the person knows that the lost phone is exactly 47 feet from the nearest cell tower. And we know that the person is currently standing 23 feet away from the same cell tower. So the expression 47 plus 23 will tell us the furthest the phone could be from the person. Since 47 plus 23 equals 70, we know that the furthest the phone can be from that person is 70 feet. Problem number four from 7th grade unit 7 lesson 2. Each row contains the degree measures of two complementary angles. Complete the table. Complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. So we know that 90 minus the given measure will give us the unknown measure. So 90 minus 80 equals the unknown measure. 90 minus 80 is 10. A 10 degree angle would be a complementary angle to an 80 degree angle. Let's do the next one. 90 degrees minus 25 degrees equals 65 degrees. So an angle of 65 degrees is a complementary angle to an angle of 25 degrees. Let's do the next one. 90 minus 54. That equals 36. That means a 36 degree angle would be complementary to a 54 degree angle. Let's do the last one. They've given us an unknown measure of x. So we'll just do 90 degrees minus x or 90 minus x. The complementary angle to x is 90 minus x. Problem number five from seventh grade unit seven lesson one. Here are two patterns made using identical rhombuses. Without using a protractor, determine the value of A and B. Explain or show your reasoning. First, let's see how many angle A's can fit in a full circle, because we know a full circle is 360 degrees. Six angle A's in a full circle, or six angle A's in 360 degrees. So 360 divided by six, means that each of the angle A's is 60 degrees. And this information shows us that two A's plus two B's equals 360 degrees. Since we know that the two A's are each worth 60, then two A's would be worth 120. We can write the equation 120 plus two B equals 360. Next, solve for B by subtracting 120 from both sides of the equal sign. Now we're left with 2B equals 240. Let's make it 1B by dividing both sides by 2. Now we're left with 1B or B equals 120. So we know that the angle for B is 120 degrees. Problem number 6 from 7th grade unit 4 lesson 3. Mai's family is traveling in a car at a constant speed of 65 miles per hour. A. At that speed, how long will it take them to travel 200 miles? We can make a table and put miles on one side and hours on the other. The car is traveling 65 miles in one hour. 65 divided by 65 equals 1. When they're traveling for 200 miles, we can do 200 divided by 65 to figure out how many hours it'll take them to travel 200 miles. 200 divided by 65 equals 3.07. So it should take them 3.07 hours to travel 200 miles. B, how far do they travel in 25 minutes? Let's go back to our table. Now we need to put 25 minutes in the hours side. But remember, it's the hours side. Since there's 60 minutes in an hour, we can say that 25 minutes can be represented as 25 out of 60 or 25 over 60. We need to multiply 25 over 60 times 65 to figure out how far or how many miles they can travel in 25 minutes. 25 over 60 times 65 equals 27.1. So that means that they can travel 27.1 miles in 25 minutes. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and you can watch the next lesson. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.